Hi everybody, uh, Dr. John here. How are you guys doing? Um, just gonna go over some basics of chromatography today. Uh, I'm gonna show you the Pure 99 system. A lot of people ask about it. Um, and um, we've been putting a lot of uh, videos and content together recently on it. It's one of those things that we've um, recently added an innovation to. Um, uh, it's called the Automated Solvent Recovery System onto it. So it's, it's really um, a big deal. Um, new product for us, so we're pretty excited about it. Um, the Pier 99 has been around uh, for quite some time. In fact, we have um, been selling it now for almost five or six years. Um, in fact, one of our original um, sales was on a Pier 99 system. And, and what a Pier 99 system is, is it's a chromatography system. So it separates out components of a mixture into individual um, containers. Um, and um, there are basically a couple different types of chromatography. Uh, one is called an analytical chromatography, and the other is called preparative chromatography. And there are other kinds too, but I'm just gonna show you those two. Analytical chromatography, you're probably familiar with because you have you know, certificates of analysis and things like that, and those will tell you, okay, well, you have point, less than 0.3% THC in my sample, so it's a good sample, or I have a 80% uh, uh, CBD in there. Those types of um, analyses are done on the analytical scale. So they're really small volumes and maybe microliters volumes, and you really don't have an objective of um, maintaining and recovering the sample in two different vessels, okay? Preparative chromatography, on the other hand, your goal is to really separate out the compounds and then put them into separate buckets so that you can uh, use those uh, the components of the, in different ways. And, um, a lot of people have applied this to THC remediation for hemp uh, compounds. So, for example, if you're having a hemp extract or a hemp distillate and you want to remove the THC out of it but keep all the other stuff in there, um, that's called a broad-spectrum, um, you know, uh, CBD uh, oil, by the way. Um, you know, you would use chromatography to do that. There are other techniques also that you can use to do that, um, you know, that are, are also based on um, some, some sort of separation principle, um, like a Craig machine or um, that centrifugal chromatography, for example. Um, but we're going to be focusing today on uh, the Pier 99 and column chromatography and specifically preparative chromatography. So uh, let's get started. Uh, this is a picture of uh, a Pier 99 system. It's a cr preparative chromatography system. Um, and really, it involves uh, several different components. Okay. The first component is uh, this is a solvent reservoir. Okay. And that's, uh, that's for the main eluent. The eluent, we call it the eluent, but it's main solvent that's used to do the separation. Okay. And the solvent can be um, anything, really, depending on the requirements of the separation. In this case, we're using, uh, you know, an ethanol mixture. So here we have a, a solvent reservoir. And um, we have a, 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 what they call a kind of a, a visual way to tell how much is in there. This is like a dip tube in there. So you can tell exactly how much there is in this solvent reservoir. This solvent reservoir here is feeding these three pumps. Uh, and the pumps are really pumping the fluid, that, that solvent, into this column. This is a column, and the column is typically packed with particles. Uh, the particles are very selective, and they're, the, they're along with the solvent, uh, they are the ones that produce the separation. So some people have tried to do separations. You have to have the right particles, and you have to have the right solvent combination, along with the right flow rate and the right detector, in order to um, really make the separation happen, okay? And really, when you put all those conditions into uh, a method, this is what they call it. It's called a separations method. So, um, you know, those are the things that you need to be thinking about when you're thinking about a m methods and methods development. There's lots of different variables. You put those all together. You run that method again and again and again, and you test it out. And if it's repeatable, it's a good method. So this is the column here, and this column here is packed with particles, typically in here, you know, up to a kilo worth or two two kilos worth of particles in here. The particles can be a lot of different kinds. There's there's 30 to 60 micron particles, so really small, only a range. Or you can even go down to like a 10 micron or 15 micron 
or 5 micron, what they call monodispersed particles. And those are much more efficient. They produce more high back pressure, more high back pressure, uh, lots more back pressure. And, you know, um, but they're more efficient, much more efficient. So um, there's a good reason. They're more also more expensive um, the smaller the particle is. Um, but you're able to sometimes get a really good separation out with, a lot, with less of a peak volume. And I'll kind of go over what that means in just a second. So um, the fluid comes out here, um, and then it comes into the detector here, and then it go the, from the detector, a valve back here switches it between these three columns. Okay. Now, this is two detectors. I took them out of the box here. They're typically inside of this box, which is the data system. Um, and I took them out so you can see them. In this case, there's two detectors, so you have two wavelengths. Uh, you can also have a diode array detector, which would scan over an entire um, wavelength range, say 180 nanometers all the way up to visible, even uh, up to 700 uh, nanometers. Um, anything over like two or three, uh, say two, like 300 uh, to 700, those are the colors. So yellow, green, red, blue. So if you're doing like a dye separation, really what you want to have is a visible detector. The UV, um, you know, 300 to 180, even, even below 180 um, nanometers, those are really um, like for UV active compounds. So if, for example, THC and CBD, they both really absorb well at 220 nanometers. So typically would a part of the method uh, would include a 220 nanometer uh, UV detection, and that would be this, this detector right there. This is an interesting uh, portion to the Pure 99, and this is this automated solvent recovery system. So you can imagine this, these pumps right here, you know, delivering up to six to seven liters per minute maximum um, you know, you, you would, wouldn't want to be generating all that solvent. You'd put them into barrels. You'd have to have a lot of barrels off the side here. And, um, so it really becomes inconvenient. What this system does is it automatically, um, recovers the solvent and then recycles it back to the beginning. Um, so that's something that is a, a great innovation here because you don't have to have all that solvent around. And, um, it does that with three separate falling film, um, evaporators essentially. So the, the fluid comes through here and then it comes in here. And the volatile component of the evaporated, uh, it gets evaporated and comes out here and then it gets condensed here. And then this goes back into a solvent recycle right here. So that's how the system works. It's pretty neat. Um, just to kind of give it to you a, a picture of that in a more pictorial way, um, very similar here, you have um, a system here where you have a, a, you know, the main eluent fluid coming through here, going into a valve and then through the column, through the, the detector, and then out into waste or out into one of the um, you know, reservoirs. In this case, there's an injector pump here too, you can see. And that's where, the f that's where the injector loop is coming like this. And it's always flowing around in a loop at a certain pressure. And when we want to inject part of the sample onto the column to do it, this switches so that this pump now is now flowing through the column and it delivers um, the sample in a small amount to the column, does the separation, and then it switches back and this pump continues to push through. So it's really cool. Um, this pump right here is a makeup pump. So oftentimes you want to have like a gradient or you want to have a different amounts of uh, modifier, different solvent mixes. This is, a, this is a solvent mixing stream right here. And then this right here is, um, is a Coriolis meter. So the Coriolis meter really is always looking at density. It's looking at the flow rate. It's reporting back. And um, in this particular application, we set the density at a particular level, and we always want to have it seek towards that one density. So that density tells us, hey, that's the right solvent composition for this column. So that's essentially um, a pictorial way of looking at it. Um, a little bit, uh, a little bit of a comment here on what happens when you get a separation. Okay, so you get a separation here. This valve right here selects between these three vessels. You can see. So um, if I know exactly, here's a chromatogram right here. Here's my, uh, here's my chromatogram, and yeah, I know that the THC comes out right here, and I'll show you how I know that in a couple minutes. 
here's a mixture of both THC and CBD that comes out right here, and then this is all CBD. So if I know that this is it, this is it, I can tell this valve, okay, while, while it's running in this time, all of this goes into this vessel. This mixture here goes into this mixture waste vessel, and the CBD goes into this middle vessel. So that's how we do it. And the trick is really knowing when that THC is coming out and when the CBD is coming out. Now, you notice that, um, you know, typically with a, uh, you know, with a chromatogram, with, with a typical analytical chromatogram, what you would see is something that looks like this. So you can see that, you know, here's your THC coming out right here. Here's your CBD coming out right here. And typically you would measure the area under the curve here, the area under the curve here, and you'd be able to know, okay, there's more CBD or there's, there's five milligrams of CBD in that sample and there's one milligram of THC in that sample, for example. Um, so why is this looking so uh, weird? Why is this just one big blob of a peak, right? Like this. Well, that's because we're overloading the column. We're putting a tremendous amount of uh, sample on the column, and that's why it's, it's all coming together. So you have to have knowledge ahead of time that you're going to get this type of a separation, and you also need to know when the THC has always already come out, and you need to know where the THC stops and the, where the CBD begins. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we do that in terms of a process. Um, typically on this type of a column, you're talking about, you know, little tiny columns. So 4.6 millimeter ID versus up here, you're talking about 13 to 15 centimeters ID. So you're, you're talking about a tremendous uh, amount of, uh, of, a, of a larger column compared to, compared to this small column down here. This is called analytical and this is called preparative. Okay. So now you got the basics down, um, and hopefully that made sense to you. Um, you can see here, there's, a, again, going back to our system, um, you know, you, that's, that's basically uh, what it looks like. There's, you, can, you can't really see, for example, the, um, you know, the injector pump back there. You can't see the gradient makeup pump back there. But just suffice it to say that it's all, it's all in the back. So um, when you actually purchase a, a piece of equipment like this, um, obviously, all of the uh, condensers and everything, they're all insulated. So that's what that looks like. So um, let me go sh show you a little bit about how we go about um, really determining where to take the cuts. Okay, and when I say cuts, I'm really talking about this. Where do I, where do I start to take my THC and put it into this vessel? And where do I stop to take the THC and start to take CBD and put it into this vessel? So we call that cuts. So let me show you the process, though, which we do that. It's kind of given here, right here. Here's a chromatogram right here. You can see it. This is a 220 nanometer trace, okay? And then um, what we do is we take samples uh, of this. So we, buy, we go to the detector, and then right after the detector, instead of putting them into the solvent recovery system into the vessels, we put them into these jars here, you can see. So there's the different fractions right here that we're taking. And here's the stuff that comes out of those fractions right here. And you can see that in this case, we know that the THC comes out right here. And you can see that. So here's one, two, three, nothing's coming out. And then all of a sudden, while the THC is starting to come out, it starts to disappear here by eight. And then nine, 10, 11, this is all pure CBD from, from here on. So that's how we know, okay, right here, this goes into the first vessel, and then everything else basically goes into the CBD vessel. And if you want to keep it really pure, like this 8 and 9, there may be trace amounts of THC in there, you may want to put those into the mixed, mixed vessel. So that's what that looks like. Now, once we have all of these vessels here, we typically we need to work them up and test them. And we typically have an HPLC in order to do that because you want to know how much of the THC and CBD is in each of those. So we do a sample preparation. This is kind of what that looks like. So we take each of those samples, we prepare it, and we put it into a vessel here. 
And you can see that those are those, this is a picture right here of those different vessels. And you can see the Delta 9 we showed right here comes out very nicely in this. There's a little mixture here, and then this is all CBD. So that's a kind of an overview of the way you do a method development in terms of understanding what's coming out in your peak. You're going to need to have an HPLC piece of equipment to really test and to tell you what exactly is in each of those. And then once you know what's in each of those, then you can pick your cuts. And in this case, we would cut something along this line. So this would go into THC. Here's This would go into mix. And then this would be CBD. This would be the mix. And this would be THC. And I'd start to cut right there. So um, that's how that all rolls down. So I hope hopefully that was helpful for you to understand. Now, a lot of people are wondering, okay, so how do I know then what the throughput is? It's almost like the second question you always get. So um, in order to know what the throughput is, it really depends on um, what your method is, okay? So in this particular method, uh, we are in this particular uh, chromatogram from here to here, excuse me, from here to here, this is about 200 grams. So we have one minute, two minutes, and two and a half minutes. So you're talking about me basically 200 grams every two and a half minutes that you're separating. This again, right here, would go into the THC bin. This would be the CB CBD bin. So you're looking at about 80 grams per minute. Now, um, you can see all this wasted time right here. And right here, what you want to do to get rid of that wasted time is you want to stack your injections. And uh, the way you do that is you start to inject right at this, right at this end point here just to take up this, this really early stage. So here you can see here's one, and then you do another injection, two and three, and, and so on and so forth. That way, you would be able to, um, in your stack injections, really improve your throughput even more than 80 well, no, you try to hit that 80 grams per minute altogether. Now, just because 200 uh, divided by 2.5 is 80 grams doesn't mean that you can't put more on the column. You can actually do more on the column. And um, typically, what you there are some limits as to what you can put on the column. Um, so one of the things that we always do is, um, you know, try to tell you that you're, you're really able to, you know, decide what kind of throughput you want, and there's trade-offs with every one of those throughput items. Um, and what are the trade-offs? Well, if you overload the column, some of the CBD that's in here will probably come out here, and so you won't, you'll be losing some of the CBD into the THC fraction. So that's a trade-off you need to make by overloading the column. Um, the other thing that we do here, you can see, interestingly enough, right here, you can see there's this little dip here. This is actually a gradient. So um, the gradient is basically we're starting off with uh, one particular nonpolar uh, solvent, and then we add in more and more polar solvent as it goes along. So this, this CBD actually starts to come out faster. Um, in fact, uh, this, this right here probably can, can be moved in even more by adding more, more uh, polar solvent. So... There's a lot of things you can do to speed things up and increase the uh, production rate. But 80 grams a minute is not bad um, for this particular piece of equipment. Um, it's, it's a really great um, throughput. So that is uh, the Pure 99 in a nutshell. Uh, I hope it was helpful to you. Um, a lot of people are interested in this particular technique, again, so they can make broad-spectrum um, CBD or they can make broad spectrum CBG. Um, a lot of people wanna, for example, use a chromatography system like this to separate out CBG from CBD or um, Delta-8 from Delta-9, for example. That would be a different method than what I showed you here. Um, so you would have to have, maybe it would be longer, maybe the throughput would be less. Um, you know, For example, the Delta-8, Delta-9 separation, which can be done. Um, you, you would need to, the selectivity is not so hot, um, so you have to have, um, you have to have, it takes a little bit longer to do, and your throughput goes down. So, like I said, there, with every um, action that you take, there's always going to be some sort of 
I don't know what you want to say, like trade-off to it. So that's the, that's the bottom line. But it's a very versatile system. It can be used. It's, it's basically ubiquitous throughout the world and throughout pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals. People use these for in, uh, to make bio, you know, bio drugs, um, small molecules, large molecules like proteins. Um, people use chromatography systems for all of those in very large preparative systems. So that's, it's a very uh, well-known technique throughout the world and uh, very well established. So um, this has been Dr. John Thompson. I uh, hope you enjoyed this presentation on the Pier 99 and uh, hope to talk to you guys later. Thanks, bye. Are you stuck in your hemp or cannabis business? Are you not reaching your processing goals? Here at Extract Lab, we offer a free 20 minute CBD jam session. A CBD Jam session is a conversation with an industry expert, not a sales call. A conversation where you can talk to us about whatever issues you are having right now and where you are stuck. We will help you uncover any issues you are currently having in your business, create a solution to fit your current scale, develop a future scale-up plan based on your needs, and help you make your processing goals a reality, all while getting your business plan back on track. Schedule your free 20-minute CBD Jam session at 1-651-600-0036. Again, that number is 1-651-600-0036.